Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. InshaAllah keep contact with help me at nurmuhammad.com. Uh, Facebook opened up support for the page, our main page at Shaykh Nojan that if you can be a supporter for the page, inshaAllah that helps that everything that we're doing is our da'wah. That from the videos that been put out, they're now out into the UK and that goes from the UK all over Europe, from uh, Canada and North and South America, all over the internet, all over YouTube, the books, the articles, the Urdu page is very intense now, lots of articles, lots of propagation, means lots of da'wah. So we are in continuous mode of trying to seek ways to get support. So alhamdulillah the page opened up for supporters for a small fee less than what you pay for a coffee in the West. You could be a supporter of the page and alhamdulillah every bit counts. And then Allah there are in the business world there are clever people who have insurance for everything. Because that which they build up they want to insure it so that any type of loss you know you insure against loss. And alhamdulillah in the spiritual world Allah's best of insurance is the money that we donate and that the support that we give is an insurance policy with Allah That you're taking from your dunya and you're using your dunya to buy your paradise. Don't think dunya hasanat, akhirat hasanat that I'll do whatever I want in the physical world and then inshaAllah will forgive and maybe I'll have something in my akhirah. But only Allah come into our lives and teach us, no, no you should be using your dunya to buy your akhirah. Means that if you have your eye on a house in paradise you buy it brick by brick. Don't just think it's going to appear and, and be shocked with Allah Oh what happened Ya Rabbi how come it just didn't appear? Only Allah come into our life and teach everything that you're doing and giving in the way of that reality is a home in your akhirah. And only Allah taught us in such a way that the love so intense, so intense that they ask Ya Rabbi I don't want that house in paradise. All that I'm asking for is not for a house in paradise but I'm asking for the holy face of the Divine the Presence. Because they understood that everything will perish, dunya will perish and akhirah will perish. And all that will remain is the holy face. So then they asked Ya Rabbi why we want from what is perishing grant us that which is eternal beyond understanding. So it means that everything of their dunya was a means in which to achieve the realities of akhirah. And that what made them to be inspired and clever, how to understand to reach to those realities. We pray that Allah inspire us and dress us. The month of Muharram open in a couple weeks inshaAllah. And that's a month in which to step with our right foot, we shower, we have the awrad, we have all the wazifas or etiquettes that are to be recited on a daily basis, monthly basis uh, for each of the salahs, everything. So when we look to the month, we look to Muharram, then read it before the month begins. So you don't say, oh I missed it again. Is that no, I should be showering and anticipating the welcoming of the month. I should step with my right foot in my salah that, Ya Rabbi, I'm asking to make a hijrah to you. Muharram means I'm asking for a year of no haram that led me to leave badness and things that are not pleasing to you and enter towards your divinely realities. More so than ever, because we see the extent of difficulty coming upon the earth. So then those whom their hearts are inspired they're insuring up, they're getting lots of insurance. Insurance for themselves, for their families, for all that they love. And this is not a, 
A physical insurance that any company can give you, this is only a Divinely insurance. That, Ya Rabbi make my hisab and my account to be good with you with Sayyidina Muhammad to protect against every type of difficulty and calamity. One of a direct calamity and the second of an indirect calamity that if you are not destined to be blown up at least not be destined Ya Rabbi for what, what are those things called? Ricochet. Ricochet or a, a, a fraction, fractional? Oh. What is it called? Fractional? Fragments. Frag no, that's fragments or pieces. <laughs> what? Shrapnel. Shrapnel. The, the things that fly out of something and they rip people to pieces through difficulty. In such a difficult time that we see and you open and uh, go to bed with one understanding you wake up and half a city is gone somewhere on this earth. It's unpredictable, unimaginable and this is the time in which Allah says that we bought from them their dunya and we gave to them akhirah in exchange. Remember every year, every month has a surah. Surah Muharram is Surah Tawbah, ninth surah. The Bab al-Muharram when Muharram opens it starts for awliyaullah from 9, 18, 27. Surah Tawbah SubhanAllah has immense ayatul kareem about haqqaiqs and realities in which Allah described that the companions of the cave described within the holy surah that we bought from the believers their dunya and gave to them akhirah in exchange. Every type of reality that Allah won't address in this holy surah and a surah in which has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Surah Tawbah has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem because this is the this is the gate of of Salli li Rabbika Wanhar, sacrifice yourself, Bismillah Allahu Akbar. That, ya Rabbi I want to sacrifice myself when I enter into this month. I don't want what is, is for me, I want what is pleasing for you and what's pleasing for Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. And we try our best to live a life of sacrifice. Doesn't mean we're perfected but we're taking at least the path of perfection. This is not about perfect and glowing and shining individuals but these are people whom at least are attempting and trying to take a path of perfection where rest of humanity is not even trying and that's how bad the situation is. We pray that Allah address us and bless us with that understanding inshaAllah. What do we have for any questions here before we close? Yes, the other question hmm. earlier. That one the tajalli not coming for okay. that. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, We're closer to Muharram will answer that. <coughs> Uh, dear Shaykh and staff, best salams to you all. Please say thee kindly advise on what to recite for jealousy. I've been contemplating and doing muhasaba. This big hurdle keeps coming up. In fact, jealousy and anger. Alhamdulillah, anger is better, but jealousy is still there. Ya Madhul Ya Sayyidi to recite for jealousy and anger. Alhamdulillah that the, all of this is, is based on the practices of the energy. That to understand the energy, how to build your energy, how to understand your wudu, how to seal your wudu, how to make your connection and how to do your tafakkur. That's the foundation of this whole teaching. If you tune into this channel and to this teacher it's about how to make your muraqabah, how to connect with the energy, how to seal your energy through the holy sunnah and all of the sharia of what Sayyidina Muhammad brought for us is reduced into the understandings of energy. When we understand that energy then we begin to take our accounting of ourself. When we account for ourself of why we react to the people, places and things then we try to find the guilty servant within that is only myself. That why do I react this way to this person and to this situation? If we identify the sickness 
of jealousy and anger. The anger is the root of everything because what makes jealousy dangerous is the qadab. You can be jealous and it doesn't spark anything. The danger like a pilot light that's waiting for a gas for the nafs to explode. The pilot light is always on, it's the qadab and the anger that will hit it like gas and make that pilot light like a furnace. And that's when that person is just ignited, their color changes, means the anger is the danger that the character attribute that's coming out that shows us our anger then that is the salawats and all of the spiritual practices. That when we have qadab and anger we have to understand the, the concept of wudu, the power of wudu. As soon as we're angry make our wudu, try not to leave your state of wudu. That whenever you thought you lost it go back in and wash, make your two, two rakahs of wudu and keep yourself sealed with that wudu making lots of salawats. That salawat brings an energy into the soul, brings the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad From that holy presence of Sayyidina Muhammad begins the dress upon the soul. That dress upon the soul then begins to take away all these difficulties. So we increase the amounts of salawat, make the muraqabah to be stronger, the meditation to be stronger. That for Haleem, Ya Haleem, Ya Haleem, Ya Haleem and also Salat al-Najat. The tahajjud prayers, the early morning prayers before fajr are very powerful for the soul. Salat al-Najat we have on the app. The dua of Salat al-Najat is to take away qadab and anger. Ya Rabbi that I'm overtaken like a fire onto wood. So then you recite that dua, you can print out that dua, you copy paste it and you can print it out and read it and go into your najat, into your sujood asking Allah to take away this qadab, take away this anger in my heart. And every time we wash, before we enter into the wash we say, قُلْ يَا النَّهْرُ كُونِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمٍ Ya Rabbi that make the fire to be cool and peaceful, don't let the fire to overtake me but let this fire to be in my heart and become like a light of iman and himma in which to do more for Allah more zeal to accomplish for Allah not a fire that burns me and burns other people inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, if we, keep looking, if we keep looking at ourselves in the mirror or if we are dressing up looking attractive and clicking on photos in our home, is this going to affect our energy and is it okay to do so? I mean is any negative energy going to harm us, evil eye when we do so? Your own eye to, your, to yourself? No, not that I'm… Hmm? Maybe yeah, yeah. That to look at yourself in the mirror and, and send an energy back to yourself is, is, is not the way that energy works. But to live a life in which you take pride at looking, you can risk the danger of, of pride. So when they look too much at themselves, be too fussy about how they look, their appearance is too much like this, then they want to take pictures of that. Yeah, then all of the pride and all of the bad characteristics start to enter within insan. So that's what the, is happening right now with all of these social media and the pursuit of likes and that is a tremendous difficulty upon humanity that they are in pursuit of likes. Then when they don't get the likes they won't, they show more and more of themselves and before you know it it's into completely satanic understandings. And that's all the shaitan wounds. And every time somebody's looking they're sending energy because we are energy beings and that's the difficulty that insan has. Not understanding that from their eyes they produce an energy, from their heart they produce an energy. And then they shoot this energy back and forth to each other. So to be weary of that 
and to be conscious that, Ya Rabbi not let pride to affect me and to enter into me and to be too happy about my appearance. So trying to regulate that inshaAllah to the best of our ability and trying to keep ourselves off of social media at a personal level if it's for your work and for your business then that's something else. But as far as posting all of your personal events, your comings, your goings and all of everything that you do is highly recommended never to do that. It's of no benefit to you, to your family and to your soul inshaAllah. Uh, As Alaikum Sayyidi a few questions for our beloved shaykh. Should people in their twenties plan their life, their lives around the nazul of Imam Mahdi? If yes, how do we specifically plan if we intend to support him in every way? And is there any special barakah or role for the people of Pakistan to play in the upcoming times? InshaAllah, it's a, a way of faith that this is from Sayyidina Muhammad This has to do with the great secret of iman that we've said many times in this teaching the haqqaiq of the understanding of Sayyidina Mahdi has to do with building faith. Just at that level before we talk about the actual zuhur is that from today to judgment day is impossible to plan for. We said before you, you say, okay it's going to be hot, I'll get boots, it's going to be sunny, I'll get an umbrella. It's impossible to plan for that. A ni'mat and a blessing from Prophet is that to make a midpoint between now and judgment day in which the ummah should be preparing for that. And that's the secret. It's not when Sayyidina Mahdi is going to come because that's not relevant in this test. It's to believe that he is coming and that his zuhur is ever present. As a result, I live my life with the preparation of Akhir Zaman and this was so much so that the Sahabi believed that to their core. They believed at any moment the Dajjal was going to appear. Means how they, they kept that love and yaqeen for the teachings of Prophet So means it's a part of faith to believe that Dajjal is coming and every type of mischief coming, Akhir Zaman is coming and all the alamat and signs that Prophet has given to us. That's when people are, are, are talking about Sayyidina Mahdi and the internet is completely ridiculous. All of this are in the books of the days of the last days of the alamat, the books of the signs of the last days, the books of and the teachings and the hadith of Dajjal that we were supposed to live a life in which our faith was to believe in these days that were coming, judgment day is coming, the Dajjal and the man of deceit is coming, destruction of all of this dunya is coming, I can prepare for that. I should live a life in which I'm prepared for that. That if I come to the house of one of those students they should have food in their home, they should have supplies in their home, they should have all of the necessities to live through a difficult time. If you believe difficult times were coming and SubhanAllah look what Allah brought on the earth, made everybody to go into their homes and buy supplies. You couldn't even find anything through the internet, they weren't shipping anything for two weeks. And what were you going to do with no food, no nothing? That was a sign from Allah that be prepared something very difficult is coming. If it all opened up and you restocked, live a life in which you are continuously restocked. You are stocked up. That So then when Allah looks to that servant, that servant has faith. And that's how you know they have faith is that they believe Akhar zaman is coming, they believe these difficulties are coming. As a result of having faith a light enters into their heart. When a light enters into your heart what happens? You begin to see what other people don't see. 
And in these days when you're saying, Ya Rabbi I'm giving in the way of Sayyidina Mahdi I'm buying my supplies because of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi I'm doing as many good things as I can for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi Then what's important is that as soon as you make your tafakkur and contemplation you begin to see the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi That's what's important. Not counting how many buildings are destroyed before I really believe and, oh look it's never happened now you guys keep saying it's going to happen. That's not the… that wasn't the point. The point wasn't to estimate the time but to live a life in which you believe is coming right tomorrow. You're tracking the signs, your desire for dunya is going down. Who would want to make 50 years of planning when you don't know what's happening in two days. Our life from this year to last year completely changed. No one in their world would have imagined every shop has plastic on it, everybody walking like it's a UFO movie with masks and guards. They even put all these clothes on and say, stay away, stay away. They're scared of something they don't see. They all have masks and gloves and and shields and, and pretty soon they'll have helmets with oxygen tanks. It's like, I've seen this in a scary movie and that movie became now. And as Allah says, so what are you waiting for? So when you believe, you believe of course you begin through your heart to see them and be with them because that's your belief and that is the station of iman, that's what's important. Not that you stop all your work, stop your degree, stop everything, what is that? Then you be a whole bunch of homeless and hungry people waiting for Sayyidina Matza, you don't even have an ability to get a stick at that time. But live a life complete, work hard all day long and pray all night long and believe, stock up, put supplies, do everything of good character and with the station of belief Allah open the eyes of the heart to begin to witness what Allah wants them to witness. So anyone who debates with you about the time is now, the time is then say, you lost the whole point, go watch our shaykh's video. Wasn't you or any… when you hear a scholar saying it is the worst, oh that's 200 years away, what? Is they didn't even understand this was a point of iman. That's why it was a, uh, when Allah gives, He gives ilm al laduni wa hikmati bi salihin that I not only give you the knowledges and understanding of these hadiths but I give you the wisdom of, of what Prophet wanted to establish by saying these things. One is the actual presence and the more important is that you should be spiritually with him all the time. That Sayyidina Mahdi Salam's dress spiritually if he's with you, you become Mahdiyoon and you'll have a reddish light onto your light. And that light is fierce in fighting for faith because that's from the Sahabi Sayyidina Omar Farooq At the Lataif Qalb he's at the red station of the Qalb. What's the Qalb? The Sir and the Sir is red because battle and the greatest battle Quj al haq was the haq al The Zayat al Kareem in charge of that Lataif of the Sir that when the truth comes it goes after the falsehood and falsehood is perishing. So the Sahabi who represents that, Sayyidina Umar Farooq said he would be a prophet if, if there was prophets after me. That when the truth comes he was fierce in fighting for the truth. So that tajalli will dress the servant they become Mahdiyoon, that they're fierce in fighting for the truth, not hurting people. But their da'wah, their belief, their stance is for the truth. And they don't mix with falsehood and lies. InshaAllah. Any message for Pakistan? Yeah, Pakistan, get ready. <laughs> Keep your belief, your love, your good character, and you can see the signs all around you. Have good character, love, and muhabbat. All of these have to, to be brought back into these regions. That Islam is not about hard, Islam is not about yelling and screaming and being hard to people. Islam is about muhabbat and love and compassion and that they're fierce against devils and they are Harris alaykum bil mu'mineen, they're loving and compassionate to the believers and they're fierce against devils. Now people are what? 
they're fierce and harsh to believers and they're very compassionate to devils. They sit with them, negotiate with them, try to get money from them, uh, ask to reverse, inshaAllah. Salaamu <coughs> Sayyidi, uh, do we have permission to write the Naqshbandi Taweez with any ink pen on a paper and wear it for protection from negative energy? That's like a loaded question. <laughs> You can photocopy it if that's the only ability you have. If your, your, your writing is good, it's preferred that you write it with saffron and that you write it by yourself on a taweez and, and fold it according to how the awliya wanted fold it and how to wrap it in a green fabric and wrap it with a, a beeswax. So there's a, there's a adab for it, you can email us and we'll email you back the adab of writing it and, and how to preserve the taweez. Other than that then everybody to the best of their ability because we don't want to say something difficult and then everybody says, oh I can't photocopy it. No you can to the best of your ability Allah <coughs> grant based on intention. <coughs> um, we have to hurry, Tofiq's hungry. Okay. <laughs> This is rolling. Go sit in the chair, she'll give you back his head and give. Yeah. Um, Shaykh, I'm finding it, hard, um, it a hard time to understand a teenager's role in our way. <clears throat> I'm not sure as to how much zikr, meditation, Ramadan fast, and nafil fast, salah, etc. I should be doing. Everyone has their own opinion. And Mulana, I'm not sure about how much spirituality I should be doing at my age whilst focusing on my high school. Could Mulana provide my coordinates? Also, recently I was just observing some of my high school friends' Facebook pictures. It's haven't really spoken to any of them since the lockdown, but when I looked at their photos, I felt like a heart attack and a lot of pain in my heart. These pictures strike fear into me. Shaykh, maybe it's just my ego causing this problem, but could Shaykh provide an understanding to this and provide some guidance? Yeah, inshaAllah. Email us, please. Uh, help me at nurmuhammad.com that's a little bit more detailed and personal. As a youthful servant of Allah and as a senior citizen of Allah everything in moderation. Our way is the middle path, don't do anything <coughs> to any extreme. Shaykh Nazim described what the Sallallahu Siru Allah raised his darajat higher and higher, mm -hmm. described that, make it like a beautific dress. That's something you want to wear all the time. If you make it like a 500 pound backpack and it's such a burden to put on this belief and this Sufi path, then every time you go out you want to dump it somewhere. So they make it as light as possible, as beautific as possible. That's why the salawats, that's why the nasheeds, that's why the beautific videos, that's why the images in the videos. And people who are hardcore they say, what's this, what's that, we don't need them anyways. So the people who are hard, go to the next channel. The people whom are soft and interested in a very soft and loving approach, that's the hikmah of the last days. Everyone's looking to leave their religion. As a result, make it soft for people, make it easy for people due to the ability that you can do and never give up your future, work hard for your classes, work hard for your degree, all that you have to do and keep your balance in doing your prayers, your zikr and the practices all in moderation and spending time with family and loved ones is all a part of ibadah. Ibadah is not just sitting on the carpet and doing your zikr, ibadah is, is uh, khalwa dar anjuman which uh, again I think we've talked about that many times. That to isolate yourself in a forest and just do zikr and think you achieve something. No, no, the heart is when you say, I'm not going to eat candy and go get a job in a candy store. It means be amongst people, be amongst community and family and still be happy, still do your zikr, put your connection into your heart and keep training yourself to be amongst whom Allah wants you to be. Go to your classes without losing your faith. Be around your family without saying, no, no, I have to sit and isolate and do my zikr now for 10 hours while they're all come and gone. So it means we have to be amongst people and be moderate in our approach, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun ala
Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Keep your questions for tomorrow night inshaAllah we'll try to, to do some more inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.